Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another video. So for this one, we're going to be looking at how to work with widgets. So we're going to be working with two things. So basically, what we're going to learn is uh, is two things. So we're going to learn how to update a uh, local variable from the widget, and we're also going to run how to use PubDev widgets in Flutterflow. So this is the widget that we're going to be creating. So we're coming from this uh, uh, Pin Plus keyboard. So basically, so we're going to be, as you can see, it was updated 26 hours ago by the time I'm making this video. So we're going to be looking at how to add these to Flutterflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one, the one that I already have. So this uh, pin pad. So let's just delete all of it and go through the process of creating it again. So uh, let's just delete that. All right. So let's go ahead and get down to business. All right, so uh, we're going to scroll all the way up to the top, click on add, and we're going to create a widget. So let's rename this. I don't know why it does this several times. So just create a new widget. We're going to create a new widget. Yep, there we go. And let's call it uh, pin. Yeah, let's just call it pin pad. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, uh so this all right so the very first thing you're going to do is add the dependency and to add the dependency you have to go to the package first and go to installing so come to the installing part and copy this just copy this up to that point and you're going to go back and add it uh here so just click on this button here and that's all so you're also going to click on uh this with uh, this icon button here this button here at the top and you're going to say copy to editor so it generates the widget code for us all right now let's go ahead and look at what else we need we need this okay so i'm just going to copy this and you're going to come down here and paste your code there however you don't always do what i'm about to do all the time in all the packages but i noticed that this guy has not included these this particular import for the controller here. So I'm just going to copy this and you're going to paste it also here. All right, good. So we're done with everything there. Now, now the next thing we need to do is on this page where he is doing this uh, whole thing, we don't need to copy the whole of this code. We only need specific parts of this code. So we don't need this couple because this is just uh, wrapping this up with the body and the upper. So we don't need that. We already have our own upper built with uh, Flutterflow. So what we need on this situation is this controller code. Copy this controller code. And we are writing it on the state uh, right over the override. And then the next thing we need is the size, which is inside the widget build. And you're going to go to the widget build and we're going to paste the size right about in there. Now, we don't need the container. Why? Because we only need a specific part of this whole code. So we are not going to be copying the whole code from here. We only need the specific part of this application here. Right? This whole widget, sorry, not application. So we, for my case, I don't need that widget because it looks a little bit different because if you notice, it has some like different. So the first code that is in the example is this, but we don't need this. I need this with the rounded buttons. So he has a example with few rounded input buttons. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it right about here. Now, one thing I noticed while I was doing this stuff is that there's some things that he wrote wrongly. So this is not supposed to be circular, it's supposed to be circular. So you need to change this from circular to circular. And also, there is also something else that is missing at the bottom, which is most likely this. Uh, you, are, you have to change the comma from the comma to full colon when you're adding the widget. And there's also something else that is missing, which is something called the font family for the the keyboard it's because it's required but he has not included in the in the uh, widget so it's a variable here so i'm going to copy this i'm going to put it right below the print so put it right there and save your widget but now before you save you first need to check that it's correct however if you click if you click the save and it's not correctly formatted you're not going to have the problem so i'm going to compile it i'm going to compile the code and then come back when it's done 
all right so our code has finished comparing so let's just click on the i here and it's supposed to give us what we need so to make it more visible i'm going to keep it a height of 60 and a width of 400 height of 600 and a width of 400 so we can see all right there we go so we have our numpad working just fine so i'm just going to save it i'm going to go to the next step which is uh we're going to create a widget basically sorry not a widget but a local state now the local state that we're going to be creating is what we're going to be using to be storing the numpad the num the, the details of the uh, the pin right so i'm going to call this pin code let me just call it pin num so it's going to be a string and it's not going to be persistent so that it just be cleared anytime and you're going to go back to our we're going to go back to our there we go so we have to go to our widget code which is a pin pad here now we we want that anytime this button is clicked the on submit button is clicked we want the instead of this being like instead of this being a print we want this pin controller dot text to be added in our uh local variable state so we're going to change this and you're going to write a function that's going to be adding uh to be handling this so we're going to come here and say f f update so this is how basically you 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 access the local variable in flutterflow i'm going to say update all right sorry it's not called back that and you're also going to now go back here and say f, f up dot. so now whatever that follows here is the name of the variable you created so i think we call it pin num i think we call it pin num so and then you're going to say it's equals to now this value here so when we click on the pin num so when we click on submit it should populate our state variable with this so i'm just going to comment these out we don't need it anymore so we have the on submit we can also have the on completed so we could have this on submit we can also have another one called on completed so completed basically means that any time that this the user has finished entering the values here we can now run some uh, update so we could also do an on change so the on change you make sure if something has changed it should be populated with the new state the new uh, updates also so we can also come down here and say on changed okay so and then you're going to write this again here there you go and that's how we're going to be doing this stuff so you can just run check your code so put the comma down here and check the format so let me check oh yeah so it's not this i think i did something wrong here so it's not zero but close sorry about that and format check oh yep this needs to have a semicolon at the end like that one more error and this also needs to have a semicolon at the end one more. yeah i notice we have two closing brackets here instead of one on each of these we just need one and format there we go so now the code working just fine so you can save this code and run it so basically i'm just going to revert back after I've run it and see all right all right so we're testing uh one thing i did i had to remove the on change and on completed for now so we're going to look at that in another video so let's try something so uh, seven nine five whatever all right so when i click on this it's going to update the local state we had and when i click on the the button it's going to display that so you can use these to verify your data in the 
in your application so every time you click on on you enter some data maybe let's say 88 and you click on submit it should update and then you can confirm uh, right about here so now you can use that local state to verify that the pin matches with whatever that is logged in for that particular user so you can just go ahead and come uh, customize this to your liking and all that stuff and in case you have any questions you're going to you can always leave it in the comments so i'm going to be looking at how we can check that the user has completed to type maybe four letters five letters whatever and then that's it now if you need to make any customizations you can just do them inside here change the color change the button fill color whatever so that's really up to you so uh have a good one in case of any questions leave them in the comment section and i'll see you in the next video guys thanks for watching